As we continue to move through subtopic 2.2 on forces, the next force we are going to have a look at is friction. Um, in particular, we'll start off looking at solid friction. Uh, now, solid friction is a force that exists uh, between two objects that are in contact. And when we say two objects here, we are talking about um, solid objects, hence the word solid friction. Uh, we will have a look at um, um, fluid friction as well uh, in a later video. Now there are two types of solid friction. Uh, the first one that we're going to deal with is static friction. Um, and as the word suggests, static means um, no motion. Um, so in this case we're looking at a case of no relative motion between the two objects. And the other one is then dynamic friction. And that um, is kind of the opposite, I guess, um, it, where we do have the objects moving relative to each other. In this case, we probably consider it more that they're moving past each other. Um, so they're still in contact. And if they're moving past each other, what we're really saying there is that they're sliding. Um, just make a brief mention here, we can have rolling friction as well. Uh, we're not going to deal with that uh, type of friction here, we're just going to look at um, the idea of two objects that are sliding past each other. Um, now, in order to sort of continue this, I want to um, get you thinking a little bit here. Um, and we're going to start with a large, um, heavy, heavy box of some description, so something that's really large and heavy um, on a flat surface. And if we start out with that scenario, we'd have our, our um, here's our flat surface, here's our large heavy box that's sitting on top of it. Uh, if we consider sort of the, the force body diagram that we could draw here, uh, we'd have the weight of that box that would be acting down and we'd have, I'm going to call it the reaction force here, just to sort of stay consistent with the representation in the data booklet. Uh, that reaction force is also the normal force. Um, so that's the original scenario of the large box um, on a flat surface. Um, but then we're going to add to that an applied force and the applied force here we're going to notate using the uh, force with the subscript A, so applied force, um, and an applied force is acting on that box. And if we um, were to represent that, we'd have this um, applied force that would be acting in that direction. And initially what we're going to see, um, so we'll continue to build this diagram up as we go, um, initially um, what we would see is the frictional force and we'll use the symbol uh, F with a subscript F here. So the frictional force, uh, that's going to balance the applied force. So it balances FA. What that means is that it's going to be equal and opposite. Um, so it's going to be the same magnitude but in the opposite direction. Um, and the reason for that is that um, that applied force isn't yet great enough to cause the box to actually move. Or another way to say that um, is that the applied force isn't able to overcome the frictional force, or in this case the static friction. Um, so that would be the, the, the initial situation. Uh, if we were to then continue to increase uh, that applied force, so as FA increases, the box is still going to be stationary, um, so that means that the frictional force, the static frictional force, uh, will also increase until the box actually does start moving. So until FA is large enough um, to cause the box to start moving. 
and that uh, basically means that um, or when that occurs let's have a look at that aspect um, so that's going to occur um, when the frictional force has reached its maximum value and its maximum value is actually related uh, to the um, normal force or the, the vector R that we represented on that diagram um, and that uh, maximum value is given by this equation uh, the frictional force here is going to be equal to this uh, value mu s multiplied by the normal force R now obviously mu s is a new quantity so let's explain what that is um, mu s is actually known as the coefficient of static friction so notice the subscript s indicates statics indicates static um, and that is a, a quantity um, that basically it's going to depend on the surfaces that are involved so to give you an idea um, if you had say looking at a, a car sort of scenario um, tires and concrete that has a uh, the coefficient of static friction there is 1.0 um, if you're looking at a tire and a wet road that has a coefficient of 0 0.8 so you can see there the um, less uh, sorry 0 0.6 um, the coefficient of friction is smaller when you've got a, a wet road um, a tire and ice it's even smaller again um, that goes down to 0 0.3 um, so that coefficient of friction just gives us an indication of how strong that frictional force is depending on the surfaces that are involved now if you think back to what happens with um, that frictional force that frictional force can vary anywhere from zero newtons so if there's no applied force then the frictional force will be zero uh, up to that value of uh, mu times mu s times r so really the equation that we're looking at for this frictional force um, needs to take into account that it can vary in that way so it's always going to be less than or equal to the um, coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal force now that equation is an important one, hence the highlighting. Um, so looking at the how the frictional force due to static friction varies with um, uh, the coefficient of friction. If we now uh, have a look at dynamic friction, um, once that object is moving, as we had up above, once that box is moving, We're no longer dealing with um, static friction, uh, we're dealing with um, dynamic friction. And fortunately we don't really need to explain too much more other than the fact that the frictional force due to dynamic friction is a similar equation where we're looking now at the um, coefficient of friction for dynamic friction. Um, and the coefficient of dynamic friction is typically going to be less not always but typically going to be less um, than the coefficient for static friction uh, if we go back and look at um, um, sorry let's just add there typically less than MS for the same surface or same surfaces 
we go back and look at those same examples from above, um, so if we look at tyre and concrete, um, previously for static friction it was, um, the coefficient was 1, um, for dynamic friction it's 0 0.8. Um, a tyre and wet road uh, decreases uh, and is now 0 0.4 and a tyre and ice is uh, 0 0.2. So basically it means that the once you get something moving the frictional force is actually slightly less than what, you, what it requires to get it moving in the first place. Uh, one last thing to note here, um, both mu s and mu d are unitless quantities. What I mean by that is that we don't actually have any units of measurement um, that we can state for them and that's because um, they are a ratio Um, between two forces. Um, so between the normal force so normal force R and the frictional force. So we don't need to state units, it's simply a ratio and it tells us uh, roughly how big the frictional force is compared to the normal force. So the normal force for any object will uh, be constant, uh, it's then how much the frictional force changes based on the, the surfaces and therefore um, we get that coefficient of friction as a result. And I forgot to mention that, that um, the equation for dynamic friction is also an important one, so I'll just go through and highlight that as well.